All right. Good evening, all. Hey, we are live back again with a special version of um, a virtual jug meetup. And it's actually part of a virtual jug tour. But before we go into that, um, I will give you a few slides, just, well, basic, ba basically some housekeeping. And I hear some echo. That's always good. However, you see my, or let me just, I'm so good at screen sharing. It sh I should be doing this like more often. And sh just a second. All right, I will ask the other participants in this because you see my screen, right? At the moment. So mm -hmm, my indeed. Cool, cool. And uh, then I will open this one. So once again, welcome to the virtual jug. Uh, this one with a special session today. My name is Brian. I work for Sneak, but that's not important. However, I have to name uh, it's that the company is so nice. I have to name it twice because it's our main sponsor. Anyway, we do something in security. Um, and we are one of the co-contributors to Fuji, And that is an important thing you have to keep in mind because today is uh, a talk by Frank. And Frank will talk about Raspberry Pi stuff, some cool stuff about Java, Java FX, and Raspberry Pi and some electronics. Let's, I'm, I'm very looking forward to that. But this session is part of the Fuji virtual, I can say world tour, because this tour goes through all uh, major... Um, uh, jugs all over the world, all virtually, because, well, you know, something with a pandemic. Um, and we will probably start with uh, with uh, um, explaining what Fuji is. I will give the word to Hejan in just a second, but first some housekeeping rules, because um, we do all the uh, questions in our Slack channel. If you haven't been on our Slack channel before, just go to virtualjug.com and you will find the invite link over there. Once you are in our Slack community, go to the live sessions channel. I will keep an eye on that channel. And if there are any questions, um, I will refer them to, to Frank afterwards or at an appropriate moment. Uh, if somebody else knows the answer in the Slack channel, you're also, you can also answer. Of course, it's a community. Um, well, you've seen, you found this link. You have found the, the, the shared link. So please share that link with your friends, coworkers, family, preferably all, all of the above. And make sure that, that if you find this interesting and you know people that find this interesting, that you share this stuff because, hey, it's a community. If you have any feedback, please, please submit that either uh, through the vir Virtual Jug Slack channels or either on the on the Twitter channels. And at Virtual Jug is our uh, uh, Jug channel, but you can also ping me directly and at Brian Verm. Um, that said, I will stop sharing. And um, I first will give the word to uh, Geert Jan, who will explain something about Fuji and uh, why we do this, this whole Jug tour. So... Bring it up, Gideon. Thank you very much, Brian. So hello, everybody. My name is Gideon. I have a long history of working at Sun Microsystems and then at Oracle, and currently I'm at Azul. And with a number of other uh, Java technology organizations who you see listed here, we have set up something called Fuji. Fuji, the name um, is a combination of the words friend of OpenJDK. And so what um, Fuji, the site is, Fuji.io, is very similar um, to really cut to the point to what we used to have with Java.net. So of course, we have the wonderful OpenJDK.Java.net for contributors to OpenJDK. But the vast majority of Java developers and users of various kinds are simply using Java. And wouldn't it be wonderful if you had one uh, central place where we would go to for all information related to Java? And that is what we've um, been building. Um, and that is what Fuji is. So let's give some examples of that. Um, well, so right now what we're doing is we're going on a tour to as many JAGs as possible in March and April. So there's around uh, 20 or so that we are visiting right now. Um, to talk about this project and to get people involved. And to give you a very quick flavor of um, what Fuji is, well, first of all, we have a nice dark theme and a light theme. But in terms of content, 
What's very interesting, of course, with Java over the past years is that it's um, no longer sponsored uh, and run by one single company as uh, Sun Microsystems. Instead, there are a number of different uh, open JDK distributions. And not only that, there's also multiple different uh, releases of Java coming out uh, four times a year. So these quarterly releases. Does anyone actually know what is in those quarterly releases? What fixes have actually gone into it? Uh, on Fuji, that's the first um, aspect that we were focused on. So we thought, let's let's put together a community site. Um, the first question was, you know, what are the things that are most missing in the community? So most missing is probably a clear overview of what has gone into a particular um, update. So here you can see um, we're in Java 8 on the page right now and in the April release. And in the April release, there were 185 issues fixed. So here's on the um, all issues page, you see that the whole list of uh, of the different issues that have been fixed. And you can vote on these. And once you've voted on them, those items end up on the highlights page. And once they're on the highlights page, we as a FUJ community add commentary to these fixes. So for example, if you have a fix with the title integrate Marlin renderer per JEP 265, which is the title of that fix, that doesn't give you much context. But with our commentary here, JDK9 switched to using the higher performing Marlin renderer this is a backport of that feature to Java 8. So this gives some context. So what we want to do with Fuji is bring to the fore and highlight um, a lot of information that is in the Java community and bring it together, integrate it, and also annotate it and, and analyze it and highlight it. So this is one aspect of this. And of course, Java 16 has just been released. So you'll find in the Java 16 tab that there are over 2000 fixes that have gone into that particular release. So what is interesting is maybe which ones of those are actually the most important, which ones of those are the Japs, which ones of those does the community like most. So the idea is that you come to Fuji and that you look at through the fixes, whether it is in the O issues tab or in the component view, which gives you a, a, a nicer perspective um, per component um, and look at those issues and pick the ones that you find most interesting and vote on them or just look through them and see what's actually gone into a particular release. Related to that, uh, the security view, the CVE view, um, and, here, and here are opportunities um, in the future for uh, sneak uh, integration, because that's, of course, what sneak is focused on, on security aspects of Java. So here is a, a view on the CVE fixes that have gone into a particular quarterly update. Now, similar to that is um, something else. Um, not only are there multiple different um, quarterly updates, but there's also multiple different OpenJDK distributions. So here we have a list of those, and they come from javaalmanac.io. So this is uh, provided by Java champion Mark Hoffman. Similarly, um, something else that's very interesting is, is a list of JVM command line switches. Does anyone know where to go to find the command line switches? So Chris Newland, Java champion, has a site that provides that information. And so we've integrated, together with Chris, his content, together with Mark, his content, and this is generated from the um, OpenJDK um, uh, bug tracker um, into one integrated place where everyone can come and take a look at this, this kind of content and, and use it for daily usage of Java. Of course, um, then we added a blog and we had as a goal by midway through this year to have one new article per day. And we've been having that for about uh, three or four months already. Um, so we're doing really well in terms of content. So if you have content, either new content or um, uh, content to republish from an existing blog, that's all very welcome in different categories. So I mentioned in the release notes section that we would have all the different release notes of all the different Java technologies. That kind of content you wouldn't find anywhere else. And normally you would find the Azul release notes on the Azul site and, uh, and you know, the Payara release notes on the Payara site. Here we have the opportunity to have all the release notes together in one place. And ultimately, what we want to be able to do is to do a search. So let's say we're interested in a JFIRE, so the Java flight recorder. So I do a search, and now the search is done through all the fixes. So now it's nicely sorted. So this is what happened with JFIRE in Java 16, but also through all the blog posts. And then you find out that Marcus heard from Datadog, the JFIRE author, is actually posting articles um, together with many other people, um, Gunnar Morlin from Red Hat, um, many other people as well. So a Wikipedia 
essentially for Java developers. That's what we are um, going for. The one-stop shop that provides all the information for free, curated and managed by the Java community. So um, Frank, who's gonna be talking in a minute, um, um, is a community manager on FUJ for a whole section dedicated to the Raspberry Pi. So you can be an author of uh, content or you can think, hey, I, I really know a lot or I want to know a lot about a particular area of Java and claim ownership of that part and gather content around that. So there's a lot of content that Frank has put together here on the Raspberry Pi. So the final point is we have, of course, a Slack channel where you're very welcome to join um, in and with a lot of discussion going on and um, weekly scheduling of content. And please join us on our Twitter. We have Twitter, of course, Fuji.io, where every day you get a um, new little message saying, here's a tip or a new insight or a new article or something related to Java. <coughs> so it's the place to go to, um, and we would love for you to um, join in. That's Fuji. And uh, thank you for your attention. And we really want this to be the one stop shop for everybody. We need your ideas. We need your involvement. We need you. Important to, to say about Fuji, if, if I can add one more thing, is that it's a fully community driven thing. There are a bunch of companies that help Fuji. Um, and these companies are from all over the ecosystem, but it is a community thing and nobody is owning this as, as a single company. So feel free to add. And uh, that's why uh, Frank is here today. He yep. will be, he, he was already shown by, by Geert that uh, he that he does a lot on the Raspberry Pi. And Frank, you're going to talk about Raspberry Pi and Java. Yes, indeed. As, that was, so that was the I goal. Would, I, would, I, would sh I would shut up and I will give the stage all to you and, and ama amaze us. Come on. Hey, it's all let yours. Let me share my screen. Okay. You have my presentation? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the introduction. Yes, indeed. I'm one of the authors who publishes his content on, uh, on Fuji. So I'm very happy also to be part of, of this tour. Um, I want to talk with you about Java and JavaFX uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm Frank Delporte. I live in Belgium. Uh, I do a lot of blogging on my own blog uh, and on Fuji. And I've been programming since I was 10 years old, a long time ago. Uh, and it all started on this very fancy machine, the Commodore 64. A lot of people of my age started their computer history with, with that machine. Um, <clears throat> I'm a Java programmer, uh, daily work also, and uh, I work at Todi. Uh, we built this, this fancy little robot that uh, is a grass mower. Uh, and yesterday we launched the, the final release, the final first version, which you can buy. A very fancy machine. Take a look at the website, todi.com. But the things I'm going to talk about today, uh, actually, I learned at Coder Dojo. Uh, it's a computer club where we uh, teach kids between 6 and, and 18 uh, to work with computers, to program, uh, but also to present your work, to work together, to learn from each other. Um, and it's a totally free event. Uh, it started in Ireland, but it's now all over the world. We have 100 locations of more than 100 locations in Belgium, for instance. Um, the coaches uh, who teach these kids new stuff, uh, bring their own knowledge to this event. And that's where I learned uh, to work with, with Raspberry Pi and Arduino and electronics. Um, I, I did some stuff with that uh, a long time ago on my Commodore 64, I forgot a bit uh, about it, and then rediscovered all this amazing stuff um, with this cheap uh, Raspberry Pi and, and Arduino boards that you can buy nowadays. Um, and it all started uh, practical then because I wanted to build this, this uh, drum boot controller for my son. So he has a drum boot and then I added a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino and a few relays. Uh, and so he can control the, the lights. Um, he can select some colors from the screen uh, to control uh, this, these LED strips. Um, and as a Java programmer, I wanted to make this with Java and, and Java VIX, of course, because those are the tools I know. Um, but it took me some, some work to, to get it running uh, on, the, on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I even have a web server built in this application so we can uh, alert him that uh, that dinner is on the table and we don't have to shout because he never hears us, of course, if he's, he's drumming. Um, so I 
ended up writing an article for Magpie magazine, um, and then it became a book. Uh, so now it's a book which is available as ebook on, on LeanPub and as a paper book on the Elector uh, website. Um, a book with a lot of uh, info if you're new to Java, some crash courses, how you start with a Raspberry Pi, how you put uh, an operating system on it, uh, what the pins are, what you can do with it, and then all the different uh, ways of communicating with electronics. Uh, a lot of different ways, but there are many more. And uh, of course, uh, it's a world where you have to experiment a lot. And with the examples of my book, you can get started with these experiments and, and learn a lot of new stuff and find out how far you can go. Like for instance, use Spring and, and Swagger uh, on a Raspberry Pi to control or, or read the state uh, of a button. And, and of course, then uh, what I used in the drum boot of my son is also part of the book. Uh, it's only one of these examples where you have a an, an, an Raspberry Pi and Java controlling an Arduino, LED strips, uh, providing a web uh, interface, uh, all this fancy stuff that you can do easily with Java. Uh, some of the Java uh, experts who was also writing uh, on, on Fuji um, or have their own blog or in the book with an interview about how they feel about Java on a Raspberry Pi. Now, um, let's start with the basic and what is a Raspberry Pi? It's a very small PC. Eh? Um, they are about nine centimeters, the biggest one up to uh, six and a half for the smallest one. You have them in different flavors, uh, depending on the number of connections you want. Um, and the most popular one is the B4, uh, um, which was released only a few years ago. And you have them with two, four or uh, eight gigabytes of memory uh, between 40 and 80 euros. Um, last year, there were some announcements and some new uh, boards which were released. Uh, one of them is the Compute Module 4. As you can see, uh, it's a very uh, small form factor and there are no connectors. Actually, on the back, there are two uh, very small connectors. And the idea is that you use it as an, um, a base computer to build in your own electronics project. So you can design your own board around it with all the connectors that you need for your project, or you can buy this compute module for IO board, uh, which is actually all the peripherals that you can add to this compute board or on this uh, baseboard. I think it's 35 uh, euros for this baseboard. And it can uh, it allows you to um, start experimenting. And then the compute module itself, you have it in, I think, 32 different versions, depending on uh, with or without wireless, uh, the kind of memory and how much memory you want on top of it, uh, between 30 and 90 euros, I think, uh, in that uh, price range. Um, and the same compute module for the same processor uh, as in the Raspberry Pi 4 also was used to build the Raspberry Pi 400, uh, which was released only in November uh, last year. And as you can see, it's a keyboard with a lot of connectors. That means that the computer is built into inside this, this keyboard. Um, so you only need to plug in a power supply and attach a monitor and you're ready to go and a mouse. Uh, um, now, where did we see this type of computer? Yeah, indeed, that was exactly the same form factor where I started 35 years ago. And also uh, at that time you had that connector um, at, the, at the back where you could uh, connect a, a relay board, for instance. In that time, uh, I controlled my Lego train uh, with my Commodore 64. But at the time it was also very difficult. Uh, there was not a lot of information. You had to buy a book. Uh, which was very hard to find. And then you had to design your own electronics. But nowadays you have all of these uh, uh, components available for a very low price. Uh, some price comparison, what has changed in this uh, 35 years, if you compare the price, for instance, uh, if you recalculate it to the current price, then the Raspberry Pi is 15 times cheaper, uh, has a lot more power, has a lot more memory. Uh, of course, uh, a lot has changed in all these years. One of the biggest changes uh, at first sight is the screen. And uh, this is where I learned to program basic yeah, on the Commodore 64. Uh, that was the screen. And, and this is the screen that I was using um, while writing my book. 
So I was working on a Raspberry Pi 4 with uh, 4 gigabyte. That was the maximum at that time. Um, and I had uh, Visual Studio Code, two versions, two, two screens open. I had my Arduino EDA open uh, and some other stuff on a 4K display. And you can connect two of these 4K displays uh, on one Raspberry Pi 4. So that's a lot of power on a very uh, cheap uh, computer. Um, and then the big question, why would you use Java on a Raspberry Pi? Wasn't the Raspberry Pi uh, designed for Python? Um, yes, it was. Uh, when they designed the Raspberry Pi, they were using Python. So they were uh, also looking for a name for this board and they wanted something with fruit and then they were using Python. So it became the Raspberry Pi, but why not be it the Raspberry uh, J Java, something like that? Um, you can, if you are a Java user or a Java programmer, you can do that also on the Raspberry Pi. And if you combine it with electronics, you will learn a lot of uh, new stuff. Um, also, uh, then the criticism that a lot of programmers have on, on Java is an old language. Well, actually, it's not. Python is even older. Um, PHP and, and Qt are about the same age. Um, and nowadays, Java is evolving fast. Uh, this is a, a, a drawing from my book that I made two years ago almost. And uh, at that time, we had this schedule uh, which was uh, planned to have releases every six months. And this schedule is still there. Th they are following the schedule which was foreseen. And indeed, yesterday we had the release of Java 16 as foreseen, and we will have Java 17 uh, later this year. And all these new releases also bring improvements uh, for embedded, uh, for the small uh, ARM processor uh, computer. So uh, if we follow this trend of these uh, latest releases, uh, we can also use them on the Raspberry Pi for improved uh, performance, for instance. So as I said, I created these images for my book and I used Java VIX. I was thinking about doing it with Excel or Photoshop, but why not uh, Java VIX? And actually in a few hours, uh, this, is, uh, this was finished. I just take a screenshot and use it in my presentation and my book. Uh, all the code uh, of the book is shared on, on GitHub, of course, in Java on Raspberry Pi, uh, if you want to take one of the uh, examples. Uh, last year, I also wrote an article uh, for the Oracle Java magazine. If someone knows how to hide your Slack uh, modification, please let me know. <laughs> um, um, and that was one of the most shared articles uh, this summer on the, on the Oracle uh, Java newsletter website, uh, where I have this whole introduction of how to use um, uh, Java VIX on a Raspberry Pi controller, let read the button, uh, read the distance uh, sensor. Now, if you start with a new Raspberry Pi, you need an operating system. Uh, Raspberry Pi is providing their own OS based on Debian. Uh, you just copy it to an SD card and you're ready to go. It's based on Debian. So if you're a Linux user, Mac user, it shouldn't have any surprises for you. And it already has OpenGDK 11 uh, pre-installed in it. Uh, if you want to have a 64-bit version uh, operating system, there is one available. It's not officially released, but they're already working on it for for a long time. So I think it's uh, yeah, ready to, to be used. There are a, a few flavors of this Raspberry Pi OS, but if you uh, select the full version while uh, making your SD card, then you will have a lot of uh, pre-installed tools for programmers also. Uh, like you see with Scratch, for instance, is there if you have some kids who want to learn to program. Um, Visual Studio Code can be easily added. Uh, they have uh, downloads on the website, which are only a few months now that they provide uh, install files uh, for ARM processors, so for both ARM32 and ARM64. Um, so you can add uh, Visual Studio Code very easily to this, uh, to this port. Of course, there's also an article on Fuji about this um, with some extra uh, information about uh, the extensions that you can use in uh, Visual Studio Code to make it perfect Java uh, EDA. Now, as I said, Java is pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. So if you have this new board and you power it and you open the terminal for the first time, you can immediately do this Java minus version and you will see that you have uh, OpenGDK 11, uh, the latest one, which was in the Debian at the time that they created um, this, uh, this image. If you want to add um, uh, JavaFX, 
uh, there are a few options. Um, one of them is replacing the OpenGDK 11, which is there um, with a Liberica Bellsoft version. Uh, they have uh, some downloads which include JavaFX. That makes it easy uh, to uh, start your application. It's Java minus jar, for instance, and you have uh, your application running if you don't, uh, if you have these uh, JavaFX uh, dependencies. Um, these are the, the download uh, links. Uh, it's also somewhere on the Fuji site. Um, what I normally do, um, I use the latest Java FX. So um, maybe you don't uh, didn't know, but uh, you can combine Java 11 with the latest Java FX. So if you want to uh, experiment with Java FX 16 or the 17 uh, early access version, which is already available, then you can just download them from the Gluon uh, website who maintains, uh, who are the main maintainers of uh, Java FX. And as you can see here, they have a version which is dedicated uh, for the Raspberry Pi. It mentions here the Raspberry Pi 4, but it also works on the Raspberry Pi 3. And um, JavaFX uh, and uh, uh, certainly the latest versions bring uh, a lot of extra value uh, to the Raspberry Pi um, as um, the whole Gluon team has been working on improvements of JavaFX specifically for the Raspberry Pi and ARM devices. Um, for instance, direct rendering. So that means that you don't need a full uh, window manager um, that you can have only your application on the screen. So for instance, for uh, kiosk applications where you don't want uh, the user to open a browser or do something else uh, fancy on that uh, machine, you can just provide them with your application and only your application as the user uh, interface. And with this uh, direct rendering, you also have a very good performance. So SpaceFX, uh, the demo case of JavaFX uh, created by Gerrit Grunwald. Um, this is a video of it running on the Raspberry Pi and you see that you have nearly uh, 60 frames per second um, with this game uh, on a Raspberry Pi 4. And then some uh, other experiments uh, which were also blocked uh, either on my uh, blog or on the Fuji website. Um, one of them is uh, showing JavaFX 3D that exists already a long time. And what you see now was one of the very first uh, demo cases of JavaFX 3D. So with uh, the, the, the buttons, the keys, uh, you can uh, rotate this uh, 3D model. Also, this works uh, on, the, on the Raspberry Pi. And of course, you have FXGL, the gaming engine, uh, created by Almas. Um, also, that works very great on, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we are working on some more uh, demo cases of it. This is just using FXGL as some kind of uh, performance test. So you have 30 dots uh, moving at random uh, speed and location. And you see that uh, without any optimization, this video is already from a few months ago, uh, this renders at 30 frames uh, per second. Okay. Um, if you want more Java FX uh, information, there was a, a very uh, great talk uh, also in this Fuji tour um, by uh, Steve Chin uh, with a lot of info about uh, Java FX uh, building user interfaces, how to package it and how to uh, distribute it. Um, Another question is, uh, why would you invest in a Raspberry Pi, even if it's only a, a, a little money, a little amount of money that you need? Uh, for me, it is the Raspberry Pi header. Those 40 pins uh, on this board, these are the magic of, of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's where you connect electronic components and that you can control uh, with software. Um, there are a lot of pins, there are 40 on most uh, board versions. Uh, I created a library uh, to visualize uh, what's in there um, and also a JavaFX demo application with this library. So if we go to the 40 pin header uh, of the current board, so you have two rows of 20 pins. Some of these pins have a, a voltage, a fixed voltage, three volt, three or five volt. Some of them are ground. Um, and then some of them are uh, pins that you can control from software, uh, GPIOs, general purpose input output pins. And some have specific use cases, which is all listed uh, in this uh, library. Um, so these pins, uh, if you use them as a GPIO, that means that uh, the software value true and false uh, becomes uh, a voltage. So true is 3 volt 3, 
and false is zero volt. So if you want to connect a, a little component, um, then you can uh, connect every device which can react on this three volt tree or which can communicate with it. And then you have different protocols on how to communicate with devices, I2C, SPI, UART. Those are only a few uh, examples. Um, and for each of these examples, I created uh, something in my book to show how you can use it. Uh, for instance, uh, that's a LED segment display. This has eight segments, which is uh, ideal to demonstrate how eight bits become a, a number and how you can use this number uh, to control uh, this chip, which is here, and then uh, show the value on the display. If you want to start with electronics, uh, go to eBay or go to your uh, uh, favorite uh, web shop um, and buy an electronics starter kit. You find them from 20 till how much you want to pay. Um, and uh, depends if there is an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi inside or not. Uh, make sure you have enough resistors and LEDs. Those are the basics. Um, then also uh, a little servo motor or another motor. Just pick something uh, with the budget you want to spend on this, um, and it will give you a lot of stuff to start experimenting. Now we are gonna do a, one first quick example with LED, a light emitting diode, um, a very little light. Uh, you have them in different sizes, in different colors. Um, now, most of these uh, LEDs um, only need for instance, 2.2 volt, a low voltage. And we already saw that uh, our GPIOs gives us 3.3 volt. So um, it will not damage the LED, but it's not ideal. So there should be a resistor in between. And calculating such a resistor, uh, you may have seen this with these color bands. Also for this, I created this little uh, Maven uh, library and, and, and the Java FX application to help you to uh, calculate these values or uh, to know what the value is if it is from a resistor, if you have it in your hands, otherwise you have to calculate this yourself. Um, and it will also help you to calculate the uh, LED, uh, the resistor that you need for a specific uh, type of LED. Now, the fun thing about this library, um, that I also used it to create an app for it. And again, um, it was also part of a Fuji blog and, and my own site. Um, <clears throat> with the Gluon tools and Java FX, we were able to build from this one very small demo application, um, a native application for Windows, Mac, and Linux, um, and then also um, uh, App Store applications for iOS and Android. So together with Gluon, uh, we set up this demo project, which is also uh, fully described on Fuji, on how you can use GitHub Actions to deliver your one source project onto uh, all different uh, platforms. And you can find it in the App Store for free. Now let's do a little experiment. And I have here a, a drawing of a breadboard. Uh, where you can uh, plug in components and you have this little switch, this little button, which is connect, uh, connected to one of the GPIOs and gets 3 volt 3 on the other side. And then you have this LED, which gets 3 volt 3 from uh, one of the pins. Then you have the resistor to adjust the, the voltage. And then we go back to the ground. Um, this is how they are connected, which pins we are using. Um, and this is how it looks um, with some uh, simple wires and breadboards, stuff to experiment with, which you will find in such an electronics uh, starter kit. Um, now we can control this uh, from the terminal before we start with Java and just test if our connections are okay. So we uh, tell our uh, Raspberry Pi that we want to use GPIO pin three as an output pin. And then you can see that we can send a one or a zero to this pin and that our LED will go on and off. No rocket science, very basic uh, commands and uh, functions to control a LED and to experiment with uh, a LED. The Hello World application uh, of electronics is turning a LED on and off. Uh, now we can do the same with uh, the button. If we tell our uh, Raspberry Pi that we want to use pin five in this example as an input pin, and then we read the value of this uh, pin five, which is zero uh, if it's not connected. And if we push this button and we read it again, it has become a one. Okay. Now um, let's try to do the same uh, thing uh, with Java. Um, and we're just going to control the let's now. It's um, 
and we're going to use um, the executor, the runtime executor, to just do the exact same thing that we just did in the terminal, but then from Java. So we uh, in Java, we're going to run uh, this command GPIO mode 3 as an output pin, and then 10 times uh, toggle it on and off uh, with a little sleep in between. Very basic Java code. But the fun thing is with Java 11 uh, or since Java 11, um, you don't need to compile your Java code anymore. So we just have this uh, hello GPIO Java file um, and we can just run it. Eh? So um, we just give Java this uh, Java file. It will compile it uh, for us in the background, but we can just run it. Eh? And you will see that we now have the same uh, functionality that we had uh, in the terminal by doing the commands ourselves, and now it's uh, running from Java. Um, of course, this is very simple Java code. Uh, it's only to experiment and to get introduced uh, into this uh, this electronics world. So let's bring in some um, more advanced Java work, and we're going to use Py4j. Uh, Py4j is a Java library, which will help us um, either on one side as a library in our Java project to have Java functions to control uh, electronics, but it will call native libraries through GNI um, to access a hardware interface uh, to control these uh, GPIOs and vice versa also receive uh, events and data from these, uh, these pins into our uh, Java program. Now, Py4j already has uh, a long history, um, and there were some changes uh, this year because there were two releases uh, in January and, Feb uh, and March um, of the last versions of version 1. So the idea is that uh, 1.3 uh, is running on Java 8 and added support for the Raspberry Pi 4, 400, and then the compute module 4. Um, and it also has an unofficial uh, update script because wiring pi, which is this underlying uh, library to control uh, these GPIOs, uh, uh, got deprecated and it also didn't support the Raspberry Pi 4 anymore. So there is an unofficial version on GitHub and with uh, Pi4j, you can install it uh, on your Raspberry Pi. And then 1.4 uh, got released in March and it is a move to Java 11. Um, and it was the preparation of what is uh, more to come uh, because there were a lot of lessons learned in this uh, version one. Um, for instance, that it supports a lot of components, but all this support needs to be tested and maintained. So the next version of Py4j will be smaller, um, but more open so that you can easily extend it for other components, but that it's not longer part of the core library. Uh, another uh, thing that was learned of um, the version one is with this wiring pi, there were some um, differences in understanding the, the numbering of the pins of the Raspberry Pi. So you have this physical number, so one, two, three, four, five, six, just the logical number of the pins, how they are uh, on the board. And then you have two different wiring number schemes, BCM and we, uh, wiring pi. Um, and it's a lot of uh, confusion uh, because BCM is the standard and wiring Pi had its own uh, numbering. So um, what will uh, Pi4G do in the future? So we will, uh, we are moving to, or moved already to Java 11 and, and beyond. Uh, we are using a modular, modular approach. Um, it will support all Raspberry Pi boards, of course, and the native library wiring Pi will be replaced by Pi GPIO. But it's work in progress. I'm only one of the team members. Actually, I'm more focusing on the documentation. Uh, Robert Savage, who started the project, uh, Robert von Burke, who is also involved, and then other people who want to contribute are uh, more than welcome. Um, and we also have uh, now the support of the uh, F. H and we W um, University in Switzerland, and four students are working on example projects of this new Py4j uh, library. Um, yep. And one of these changes is then also that we are using this PCM numbering to avoid this confusion. Okay, this is the, um, the diagram of the library. Um, if you're really interested in this library, please check our documentation website and how this uh, library uh, was architected. Uh, we also launched a new website for Py4j. Um, 
and then a lot of getting started uh, documentation because we don't don't only want to uh, involve people who are really uh, um, uh, experienced in Java and electronics, uh, but we also want to uh, introduce this to people who are new to this technology or uh, are either Java developer or an electronics developer and want to learn uh, the other world and, and combine this. So uh, we are hardly focusing also on these uh, getting started uh, examples uh, on the Py4j website. Now, let me show you one uh, quick example um, which is also available on the website. Um, and it's the same thing with this button and this let um, and how you use this then in real Java code. So you have a Py4j context uh, where everything is available to control uh, the, the this electronics. And then for a button, it becomes a digital input and a config builder. You give it some values and then you can attach a listener and this listener can then handle uh, the event. So if it changes from low to high, uh, that you want to do something. And uh, for a let, it's the same uh, approach. So you see this becomes really the Java way of uh, defining an object and, and handling uh, or controlling an object or listening to events uh, triggered by this object. So as a Java developer, this feels uh, very natural. Um, but actually, you're working with physical stuff, with physical uh, components. And as it is a Java 11 and uses this modeler approach, if you have uh, a Maven and you uh, package it, then you will get a distribution directory with all the modules which are needed to run your application and also an, uh, sh um, a run file uh, to start uh, your application. So let's look at an example um, which brings everything what I was telling here a bit uh, together. So we have uh, Py4j, we have Raspberry Pi, we will use Java FX and this uh, FX gel gaming engine. And um, what I will show you now is a project where uh, the students are working on uh, what I prepared with Almas uh, in two screen uh, recordings, which are available uh, on YouTube. Um, and let me share you my screen. So I have some stuff here, uh, by the way, uh, I designed my own uh, camera uh, with some Lego and a Raspberry Pi, of course. Um, and I have here some components laying around to show you. So this is um, actually a joystick, but the joystick on the back is actually just for buttons. Uh, so if you rotate this joystick, you hit the click and that's actually just the button being touched. And I have some other buttons. So this is an arcade kit that you can buy um, for I think uh, 20 uh, or 30 euros. Um, and then you have on the Raspberry Pi, there is a hat connected on top of it, which makes it easier to connect uh, all these wires uh, to a fixed location so that it's very easy to find out where they are connected and how you can handle them. Now. I have also some code that I can show you. And I will, of course, show you on the Raspberry Pi. So um, I'm sharing here my screen of um, my Raspberry Pi 4. It is with two gigabytes of memory. So it's a very cheap computer with not that much memory. So you will see if I would type some here, uh, it's not that fast or not that responsive, but you can still work on it and do Java programming on it. Um, I show you this Pi hat. So this is uh, where everything is connected. You see here these numbers. So these BCM numbers, for instance, and then you can see that um, the joystick is connected to uh, 16 and 20 right and left. And here you have the up and down, so six and 12. That's where uh, the joystick is connected. Now, if we go into uh, some code here, you see that I defined these BCM numbers in some uh, variables that I can later use in my project. Now, we started this project without using electronics and just using a keyboard to interact with the game. It's a snake-like game. Um, and you have the keys, the arrows of your keyboard, left, right, up, down. They control the snake. Yeah? That's the idea. So if you uh, press on the left arrow of your keyboard, you want the snake to go in the left direction. Yeah? Um, and then you can play this game just with your arrows. Now, the fun thing is if we are using uh, Pi4j um, and we have Oops, a bit too fast. 
and we have these uh, input GPIOs. So I have this one method to define all the, the inputs that I want to use in my project, um, is that I can ask the FXGL, so this gaming engine, to handle this as a key press. So I don't need to do very uh, difficult programming. I just can tell my uh, game engine to handle something from an electronic component as being it uh, a key press on, on the keyboard. Now, as this is uh, created as a Maven project and we have this uh, package Maven step, you see that in the distribution uh, directory, all the modules are here available uh, to bring them, if you would build this on your PC, for instance, that you can just copy it to the Raspberry Pi. I created here on the Raspberry Pi itself. So in this uh, distribution directory, there is this run file available, which ties everything together and then starts this application. So uh, we, for now, I have to run this as sudo, which is something we are working on as we want to remove that need to run this as a pseudo project. And then you see, this is our game. By the way, I'm a very bad game player, so, whoops. Okay, so bring in the joystick. And as you can see, with very minimal code, we can control a game and I have here a button to make the snake longer. Of course, this is not a finished game. There's some work to do as we want to have food on the screen, but that's all created in just a matter of a few hours uh, while experimenting what we could do with the Raspberry Pi, uh, with Java FX, with the game engine, um, and some very easy to understand code. Uh, this project uh, is also available on the uh, Pi4j website. Okay, um, how much time do we have? I had one more example, but I think if there are questions, maybe you can go to that part. Um, if you're interested in how the drum boot is working, uh, it's using a Raspberry Pi, it's using Mosquito uh, as a queue system to transfer um, uh, commands from Raspberry Pi to the Arduino. Also that is described on my blog, how to install Mosquito uh, and use it. And of feel, course, Java feel, FX as the user feel, interface. Feel free to uh, to do another another uh, um, example if you want to. I yeah. have, I do have a couple of questions, but I I I, I guess they're quite simple. So uh, yeah, okay. Well, I show you the the, the video again. So um, as you can see, it's a Java FX application uh, which provides a lot uh, a number of buttons. In the background, it's sending all the commands. Everything that you do here is sent. As you can see on the back, you have this terminal open where everything is sent as a MQTT message to a queue, to Mosquito. So you see it happening here on the screen of the Raspberry Pi. But here you have also a Raspberry Pi who is listening to this Mosquito queue, uh, who also receives these messages. So it handles these messages and then controls the LED strip. Um, and you have this web interface where you can have, so we already have some shortcuts uh, to switch between some of the effects which are provided by uh, the LED strip. Uh, so that's one of the examples which is also available uh, in the book, in the blog, everywhere. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, what did I want to uh, show you? Uh, that Java and Java VIX on the Raspberry Pi really work. Uh, they are really great. Uh, um, if you have some Java knowledge and you didn't use a user interface before, build something with Java FX. It's also really great and very easy to do. Uh, electronics is really fun if you start playing with it uh, and it will extend your knowledge a bit, a lot because I was working also in my previous job and my current job um, together with hardware engineers who are building uh, uh, devices. Um, and uh, as a software developer, it's uh, much easier to talk to them if you understand how communication works with the electronic components, uh, what are the, the challenges uh, uh, for all these? And of course, because it's Java and you have this rich library uh, or um, a set of libraries which are available, adding a web interface or adding a, a, a database or adding the full spring environment um, uh, extends your application with a lot of uh, other possibilities.
And there's a lot uh, to look forward because we have this uh, compiled to native. Um, there are some blocks available about uh, Graal VM uh, running natively also uh, on 64-bit uh, Raspberry Pis. 32-bit uh, seems to be an issue. Um, we have this Pi4j version 2, which is now uh, getting full steam ahead for a first release. Uh, we have Java VIX, which runs on the Raspberry Pi and also brings new features uh, for uh, better uh, rendering on the screen. Um, if you want to learn more, you have my blog, my Twitter, and of course, we have a full category on uh, Fuji. And uh, pick one of those topics and just uh, start with it and experiment. And you will see, you will have a lot of frustration because it doesn't work, of course, from the first time. But once you get uh, past that one uh, first step, you will definitely have a lot of fun. Um, if you um, build something, have an ID, tweet about it, uh, share your project on Twitter. Um, we use the hashtag Java on Raspberry Pi to get some traction about this uh, Java uh, world on, on the Raspberry Pi. And of course, there is my book uh, if you want to learn more of uh, or Fuji, the website with a lot of articles. Okay. And then I think I nailed about the time that I had, <laughs> that I got. You, you you perfectly did. Amazing. Um, I love the way how how you how you have your camera set up uh, like like that. There was there was a comment on there on, on here as well, like nice camera setup. And I have to agree, like it looked, it looked pretty it looked pretty good. But what is it? It's actually it's a Raspberry Pi, uh, the the smallest one. Is that the zero or the? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, indeed. And then you have uh, this little camera. And then, yeah, I grabbed some Lego from my son. But actually, the, actually, uh, I think half of the blocks here are, are more than 30 years old because they are still mine. I think they are. They have a few different colors. They should all be white, but um, yeah. So, and so then you, you have. So you basically and, created your own webcam. Yes, like but I didn't do that because uh, Jeff Gerling, who does, does a lot of um, uh, tweeting about uh, Raspberry Pi and Ansible, uh, he created an Ansible script that you just need to run it and uh, this uh, Raspberry Pi becomes a webcam. So you just connect it as an, uh, to the USB. And I, what I have here is uh, QuickTime. And I start in QuickTime a new movie recording, and it sees both my uh, normal uh, camera in the in the in the in the laptop, and it sees the second uh, USB camera as as a possible uh, source. Amazing. So yeah, it's a fun that's, thing to do. That's great I, for but, demos, indeed. But I um, think I need to buy another lens, which goes a bit wider. <laughs> <laughs> fair point. Fair point. There was a question: like, is the Java FX direct rendering setup documented somewhere? Um, I'll have to take a look if we did already something on Fuji. Yeah, or maybe yeah. it's on the Pi4j. You you man, you you managed to or you um, Pi4j.com. We have it there already. Um, let me. If it's not check. on Fuji yet, it should be on Fuji. I it think. should be indeed. It should. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoops, what do we have here? What is mentioned here is, um, yeah, I, I added this indeed. So um, if you install, if you don't use Liberica, but you just install JavaFX from Gluon, mm -hmm. then you copy it, for instance, to your opt directory, and then you get, have to give Java a few additional parameters. So it knows where JavaFX is. Uh, which um, platform you're using. and But I have to check with Gluon again because uh, there are some different platforms that you can use. There are some different configurations that you can do here. Um, and I'm not really sure about what is the best one now at this moment because in Java 17, I think there's uh, still a more some improvements uh, coming. But this is definitely working. So this is one that we are now using with the Snake game. Um, but uh, you're right, uh, Hirtian, we should make a new update on Fuji about this. <laughs> so out, out, outside of Fuji.io, uh, Fuji uh, like the pi4j.com is, is, a, is a really great resource to, to start your JavaFX yeah, indeed. Or, any, yeah. or any Pi. Uh... Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's what we try to do with this getting started section of the website is uh, also the, the basics. If you have a new Raspberry Pi, 
how do you power it? How do you put an operating system on it? Yeah. So it describes here where you can, down, can download the imager tool and then uh, what are the steps to put this uh, uh, Raspberry Pi OS on this SD card um, and then you can get started. So there are some to-dos here um, because this is an, a website in involvement. Um, if you want to contribute, of course, it's on GitHub. Um, it's a GoHugo website. So that means that every page is a markdown file uh, in this GitHub project. So if you find an error or want to contribute something, please do. All right. Um, one question from my side, it's not something that somebody posted, but what are the downsides of using Java for, for Raspberry Pi? Are there any? You become addicted and you have no life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's my problem. <laughs> um, uh, the downsides is, um, I, I, I wrote a blog post about Java Sp uh, using Spring on the Raspberry Pi. So I built this full database application with an H2 database. And I had one remark at the end that it took 60 seconds to start. Um, and then I got challenged by Adam Bean, uh, who has this podcast. Yeah, but did you try uh, Hilidon and what is it? Um, um, so you have to, yeah. You have to think more about what are the libraries that I'm going to use and what are the dependencies that I'm bringing to this project. Don't I make it too big? Yeah, but on that's... the other hand, um, is the 60 seconds a problem? It's not that you're running a, a business critical application probably, but something that you want in your house or that you want in your company to collect some data. Um, so uh, one of the examples that we also created for Fuji was a, a dashboard-like application to monitor different uh, uh, services or devices, uh, if they are available or not. Uh, and that's also something that you can do with uh, FXGL or with uh, Java FX and then uh, the Tiles FX library of Gerrit Grunwald. So let me look it up. So this is also something we built with, uh, with Java FX and, and FXGL, the gaming engine, to monitor a lot of devices. So this is something that you can run on, on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and it is something that you can completely customize uh, for yourself and, and your, your use case. Uh, so is there a back, uh, drawback? I don't see one that you get addicted. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I think we <laughs> that, should actually that's... mention, we should mention as well, um, Almas's uh, session on the, uh, on the Jug tour. Yes. Um, he's, he's also doing a talk on FXGL and that is coming up on... Um, sorry. Ah, on the 23rd of March. So that's next week yep. at the Silicon Valley Java FX jug. So if that is in your time zone, you, you should, you should watch it live. Otherwise all these, all these talks will also be, uh, collected and, and you can view them in a library, uh, or you can, we all, we all, uh, Put them together and uh, you can view them and we will make them available on uh, on fuji so um definitely that um thank you thank you frank i i uh i feel like uh, i miss out on something like playing with elect playing with electronics and doing that with java seems seems like a legitimate uh well i wouldn't say a waste of time but a legitimate uh, <laughs> thing that i could do now in my weekends now we're we're on lockdown anyway so why not? Instead of Netflix gaming or Netflix or gaming, I can do this. This is this is much more fun. Yeah, and and and, and this turning that let on and off, that first, <laughs> how do you call it in Germany, a hardlebnis, that you yeah. can control something physically with a, with a command with Java with with whatever. Um, that's really uh, a change. It, that then you suddenly become a different kind of developer, um, mm. and it well, becomes very attractive to go further and further of course for me personally it feels like going back to my university day when we when we created or when we did play with microcontrollers and, mm -hmm. and 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 uh with 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 these kind of lead lead strips and pot meters and that kind of kind of thing yeah, so yeah, yeah. it feels like going back to your roots so uh yeah. amazing talk talk <laughs> thank you for that um i want to show uh one more thing before we um before we end and that is a single slide oh of course, I'm all, uh, 
my brain go, always goes quicker than, than what I'm trying to trying to show. And that's this one. We are still uh, doing the Java ecosystem survey. And I know that a lot of Java people are looking because, well, it's the Virgil joke. Um, it's a small 10 question survey that uh, I compiled uh, together with the folks from uh, Sneak and Azul to, to have some insights in what the current use of the Java ecosystem is. So if you have some time left, please, please just take three minutes out of your busy schedule and fill this in. And we love to have people from all over the world. So not only from Europe or, or America, but if you are based in Asia or Africa, please fill it in because the more the merrier. That's what I wanted to, um, wanted to say. Um, other than that, um, I am quite, um, quite done from, from, uh, from this point. And now I'm trying to stop my sharing. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Frank, once again, I want to thank you for this amazing session. If you're looking afterwards for this uh, session, like not live anymore, um, and you have a question, feel free to still put them in the live session channel. I mean, Frank is part of the, the virtual joke community as well. Mm -hmm. Feel free to, uh, to put the, put a question in there. Um, and, uh, 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 if, if he is not responding, probably somebody else and, but, Trust me, Frank is very passionate about about the whole, uh, the whole Raspberry Pi and 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 Java. So feel free to ask your questions there, or yeah, join the join the Fuji Slack, of course. That's yeah, that's indeed. also an option. Um, I'm gonna wave goodbye. Thank you, Frank. See you all later. Um, thank you for watching the session and keep an eye on our meetup page when we announce um, the next one. Uh, it's not yet known, but I know there are some talks in the pipeline. Although we do not yet know the exact date. From, um, from this end, I want to wave you goodbye and um, thank you for, uh, for watching. So um, see you at the next one. Thanks for having me. Bye.